Father, we bless you now for the gifts of mercy and the We pray once again, God, that you will hear us now.
on how to use the mind. And then those instructions will identify those pieces. And so each piece gets its identity from the instructions. And then those pieces must be interconnected in order for you to get the model to look like what it's supposed to look like. And what this label box does not contain that is almost a metaphor for life now the models that we have is blue. And listen, what I got out of that was when, when, when you put the old models together with blue, you had to tear them apart or break it up and, and you would no longer have a model. But this type of model, since there is no blue, you can put it together and if you don't like what you got, you can tear it loose and make something else out of it. Out in case you didn't fully understand it, 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 it was common, uh, 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 but the reality of it is, I was listening as I was coming into to church this morning to a radio program, and, and they were talking uh, uh, about transgender, and they were talking about a young lady, but they didn't use the term female. They addressed her as him because he as they addressed him had had a upper body change in other words something similar to a rapid double mastectomy uh, with the addition of uh, the chest was not left flat but was formed to look like the model of the man that God created. It, it wasn't the blue model. It was the label model. Where we now are not satisfied with what God did. And because of modern technology, we change it to suit ourselves. Even to the point, and I don't want to get vulgar, but they talk about the genital operation and how the younger generation now uh, uh, do not identify male or female by your genitalia, but I guess by an idea or whatever they decide at the time. Uh, my, my issue with that, and I don't want to stay here because we're going to move on. My issue with that is, is that you decide that you were born a woman, you want to be a man, and what happens if you don't like being a man? Okay. <laughs> you go back to all the operations again, you go back to what you work. I, I, I'm not going to leave that alone. is that there are instructions. Yes. yes. God gave us some instructions. Then there's an identity of the parts. And as we go through this passage, we're going to see how God dealt with identity. And then there's the interconnection. And so we're going to see how God talked about it and how he made that interconnection. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are purpose with power. You are purpose with power. Do you understand? Do you understand? The family model. The family model. We're going to use an alliteration as we go through. We're going to be talking with words that begin with the letter I. And no, this is not Japanese. And so as we look at the family model in verse number 18, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And here what we find is that God deals with isolation. For those that 
and, and I know there are some people who, who, who are comfortable being single, and, and Paul suggests in his writings that a single person does not have to worry about pleasing a spouse or a mate, and therefore they can dedicate their entire life to pleasing God. But here God, in the beginning, he talks about isolation, and he says it's not good for man to be alone. In other words, it's not good for man to be isolated. We talked about it last week, and we apologize for those who tried to watch it on live stream uh, because uh, we have some technical difficulties with our sound. But we talked about the fact that God, that, and when he created man, he was with man. He had communion with man. He walked with man, but he knew that he would not always walk with man. And if he wasn't walking with man, the animals were not comparable for man. For those of you who get into bestiality, God never intended that to be the way. That's why he created someone who was compatible to me. Yes, yes. For me. Yes. And so he deals with this isolation. And so what we can learn from that today is that if God did not intend for us to be isolated, then that means he must have intended for us to be in a relationship. And in order for us to be in a relationship, the first relationship that we have to get right is that relationship with him. Because of his son Jesus and the world on the cross, that we can have now a ongoing relationship with God. And when we can have the right relationship with him, then we can have a right relationship with each other. The issue for some of us is that we don't ever get to the right relationship with God, and therefore we don't get to the right relationship with each other. Some of us, we can't deal with folks who are in our own family, much less deal with a spouse. Some of us can't deal with our own children. Some of us, we don't even get in the right relationship with our animals. I know there may not be nothing some of you here, but, but I know about some folks who, who cuss their animals out. I, I know some folks that cuss while they're talking to their animals. And, and so they animals understood what they say because they're not in the right relationship. There are folks who will buy a dog. But 
not just going with what the word says. Uh, I, I think it was the fourth day that we got the sun and the moon. Uh, but in this intermission, God brings the animals. Uh, and, 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 and Sister Jack, I, knowing what I know about animals, I, I can't see within a 24-hour period of time, linear time, as we know it, that Adam could have made all of the animals, all of the birds. And I, I'm still trying to figure out how he got the name of the fish. <laughs> but that's another sermon. Yeah? But he took an intermission. Yes. He allowed Adam, he said he brought them to Adam. Adam didn't have to go nowhere. No, that's a whole lot of animals. God's a priest. And the fact that he brought them, you know, he could have brought them all at the same time.
a woman, then the woman had the DNA of the man. We go to the next verse, verse number 22. And it says that then the real which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to man. Now, this verse is a little tricky. And we were lost. If we read it just the way it reads, it reads as though God had already gave Eve an identity. Because it says that the Lord made into the rib, into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And so, first we find an introduction in this. God designs this introduction because he takes the rib, and the Bible doesn't say if Adam moved or if he moved, but somebody moved. So I tell you, because you don't bring something to someone who's already in your presence. If you, you, if, 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 if you and I are both in the kitchen, you can give me a drink of water, but you can't bring me a drink of water from the kitchen. Now, if you go to another room and get it, which separates us, then you can bring it. And so the word says that he brought the woman to Adam. But then we have to look at verse number 23. This is where Adam actually gives the woman her identity. Listen to verse number 23. You'll read along with me in your Bible. Those that are on, on social media, you can look in your Bible. 23 says, and Adam said, this is not bone of my bone. Now, I'm going to pause there for one moment. We say parenthetically, we're going to accommodate, because I want to go back to what we just talked about in the verse before, in the introduction. You know, most of the time when somebody introduces a couple that they think might work together, you know, they'll say so-and-so, this is so-and-so, and so-and-so, -and -so, this is so-and-so, and then they'll get out of the picture. They won't be the third wheel anymore. They'll let them talk and, and see what things go. But I don't see that here. I see what, what God did is according to what the word says. Now, Moses doesn't give us any more information. According to what he gives us, God brought the woman and dropped off. And he let them do their own. That, that's what the word says. Because it says, uh, Adam says, uh, therefore, I mean, Adam says that now, this is now bone of my bone. DNA of my DNA and flesh of my flesh. And I said this last week, but since you couldn't hear it, I'm going to say it again. Uh, and for those who don't like it, you did not like it again, that's okay. Uh, if I was unconscious, has anybody ever been under anesthesia before? Anybody been under good anesthesia? <laughs> Do you remember what happened under good anesthesia? So, 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 I would imagine if God's anesthesia would be the best anesthesia. Adam is under anesthesia. Adam comes out from anesthesia, not even know that he had an operation. There's no pain, he's healed. His organs are operating the same way they were before he went to sleep. All he knows, he went to sleep, and there was no, nothing comparable for him as a helper, and he woke up, and God wasn't there, and God walked. A woman. Y'all know what my question is? How did he know that she was born in this home? And flesh of his flesh. But he knew. And he said, because you born my bone and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman. And this is what I'm saying. Adam allowed, God allowed Adam to give the woman her identity. And God took the identity that Adam gave her and he used it in the verse ahead. And so Adam called her a woman and God said, I'll call a woman to serve. I told you the first man was purposed with power. And, 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 and kind of uh, 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 from, from a point of, 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 of being funny. 
point of, 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 of making a joke out of it. Uh, men can say that, 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 that Adam woke up and there hadn't been nothing around that grew right like there. And God brought the woman and he first he said, whoa! <laughs> We have been shallow hat. Somebody said, we mean shallow hat. It is we mean shallow hat. In other words, before we get to know what's in your head, we looking at what you look like. And we get attracted by what we see. And then we get stuck by what's in what we see. I said, be honest, that helps them. They, that's why they say men are visionaries.
and we miss out on what's really being said. When God was walking in the garden with Adam, God was a father figure for Adam. God gave Adam the directions. If you go back and read, he didn't tell Eve not to eat of the fruit. He told Adam not to eat of the fruit. And so God set himself up as the model for Adam to follow. And then he set Adam to be the model for Eve to follow. And Adam and Eve became the model for the children to follow. God did his part. And God instituted to, 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 to sanctify and to verify what the model that he had gave Adam. He says, I'm, I'm the one that creates marriage. Yes. Okay, now. I'm the one that defines marriage. I, I understand what our laws do, but the laws that we have today were the laws that, that were on yesteryear. The laws that were yesteryear were the same laws that was before that. We're talking about um, the There's 
these instructions that we just talked about. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother. The instructions are not stay home. And, and, and I have to say that, that even in my household, things that, that I never thought would happen. I mean, when you got a 30-year-old man living in your house, that violates God's instructions. He said they're supposed to leave with him. The children are supposed to leave. Now, now if you have a child that has a handicap or has some type of, of mental problem, then there's there are uh, circumstances or, or, or certain circumstances that cause you to have to take care of them. But 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 a, but a normal, healthy man that 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 depends on his parents to take care of him is not the model that God gave. Uh, that's a that's a Lego. Oh, I mean not Lego. Lego. <laughs> Lego We have got to follow God's instructions. And if we start at home training them to leave, then they'll do the same thing. They'll train them to leave because that, that was the model that you said. And some mothers have to say, baby, you know what? I understand. And mama, mama, sorry. Mama, wish I could just, just hug you back up. You know that at built the core got and, and you got to learn how to be a man. M-A-N. Man. There was instructions. And then in verse 24b, we talked about, we look at me, God says, you need to be interwoven or interdependent. Now, some of you asked, what's the difference between interwoven and interdependent? Interwoven, you remain you keep your identity, but you work together. It's, it's intertwined in, in, in a role. Interdependent means that, that while you have an identity, you need the identity of the other person. All right? So it matters. What God says is not only do you need to be in a role, because you need to set this model for these children, but he says you shall become one. And so you're interdependent on each other. Again, I said last week, But his intentions, 
He defined the family. And then finally in verse number 25, we find that after God created this model, that man and woman were innocent. We're not innocent anymore. But then they were innocent. Brother, how do you know that? Because verse number 25 says it. It says that they both, and they were both naked. The man and his wife. Notice this. Marriage is God's institution. The first time life is mentioned in the Bible, God created it. Adam didn't call her his wife. Adam called her a man because she was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. But God said, you can call her a woman, but I'm going to give her her position, which is